The main challenge actually comes from the fact that the micro displays using such projectors are rather slow and typically take between 2.5 and 3 milliseconds to switch from one image to the next. And the light during the transition period contributes to a large degree of ghosting or crosstalk. Now, when using active shutter glasses, this isn't a major issue because you can simply adjust the timing of the lenses of the active shutter glasses to block out the transition of light and, that, and, and thereby eliminating cross-talk or ghosting, so that's easy. But when dealing with polarization, polarization modulators, it's more challenging. So we ended up having to redesign the polarization modulator to reflect away from the screen the transitional light of the slow micro displays. And this, this ended up with the development of a smart crystal for LCOS, the LCD projector. And if anyone's interested, this is being demonstrated on our booth tomorrow at the conference. Um, but now, what we're getting is an optical efficiency almost up to 30%. So we've almost doubled the optical efficiency. So we've gone, gone from this sort of 40, 15, 16% level to almost twice that. So you get twice the image brightness on screen. But it's all fair and square doing this for an MCOS or LCD projector. But what about an, a DLP projector? This is the real challenge. Well, I'm pleased to announce that over the last 12 months, our optics experts have developed a new optical system based on a new type of glass prism, which we call the Smart Cube system. The working principle is shown as follows. Light from a DLP projector is shone into the Smart Cube optics and is split into two beams, a left image beam and a right image beam. These two image beams are then forward reflected by two perfectly planar mirrors and mutually converged onto the projection screen some distance away. Now the first thing to point out here is that there, in principle, are no polarizers used in this system, so straight away we've managed to double the optical light efficiency, and indeed the measurements of our demo systems showing that we're getting optical light efficiencies exceeding 30%. The next point to note is that the optical path lengths for these two beams, the left image beam and the right image beam, are identical. This means that the um, focal length, but more importantly, the keystone distortion of these two images are essentially identical, which basically translates to that the, that the two images on screen are, are essentially the same. So it's very easy to overlap and converge these two, these two images with a very high degree of accuracy without the necessity of, of deforming one of the mirrors <laughs> to introduce some level of convergence or divergence. The final thing to point out is that there are some LCDs incorporated into this optical system and all the LCDs are working in a push-pull system, which means that when the image is changed from one to the next, then only voltage is ever applied to the LCDs. This, makes, this means that the switching speed of this device is, goes down to about 50 microseconds, making this one of the fastest switching modulators on the market. There may be others which are as fast, but there certainly are no, which, no modulators which are faster than this. So this guy will go up to maybe 400 hertz if necessary. Okay, so I mentioned at the start that well, for only we do both passive and active solutions, and now we've managed to double the light efficiency with the passive systems, but what about the active glasses? Well, actually, over the last 12 months, I'm pleased to announce that our LCD experts have developed a new type of liquid crystal material um, with the following characteristics. The first, thing, the first thing to note is that the transmission in the open state is, is measured up to almost 85%. That means it's almost like looking for a piece of, a piece of window glass with extremely high transmission. And with a duty cycle of 50% when you're switching between the left and right eyes, this gives a theoretical and expected optical efficiency of over 40%, which is almost unheard of in the 3D business. So we're, in some respects, not just doubling the light efficiency, almost tripling it. So we're getting extremely high light efficiency values. And indeed, experiments with our demo systems are just showing that we're getting fantastic colour col col saturation using these active glasses. The next thing to note is that the switching speeds, the up switching speed and the down switching speed has been, in this particular example, has been optimised to be about one millisecond in both directions. And, um, and this is adequate for 144 hertz operation. And the, and the third point is the 
low transmission in the dark state. In fact, in the dark state, we've, we've, we've got some level of light scattering, which actually effect, effectively totally eliminates any ghosting at all. So I, was, I wouldn't say that it's got, if we get low ghosting, I would say we get no ghosting at all. Um, in fact, actually, the biggest challenge we've been facing with the development of this liquid crystal material has been the reduction of the voltage. And 12 months ago, our early demonstrators, we had to use a 200, 200 volts to operate these guys. So you had to be pretty brave to put them on in fear of electrocution. However, luckily we managed not to have any accidents and everyone in the R&D department are still with us today. And during this period, we've actually managed to push down the required voltage to 40 volts in this particular example. And we feel that's quite close to a commercial product, although we still want to knock off about another 10 volts before we release product on the market. Um, this will involve a little tweaking of the liquid crystal molecules, which we're hopefully going to be successful with by the end of the summer. So in conclusion, well, for only we've got both passive and active, active systems um, using standard products, the active shutter glasses and the polarisation modulators for DMV projectors, they're all fully approved and all handle the higher frame rates, 192 hertz and beyond. But more importantly and more interestingly, we've got a new range of smart products coming on the market. The smart crystal for L-cross or LCD projectors, the smart cube for DLP projectors and the smart view liquid crystal for the active glasses. All, all these technologies offering at least double the optical light efficiency, giving brighter images. So I think we can truly say the future of 3D looks bright or brighter with our phone. Thank you and good night for me. Probably this will be a, the topic of a presentation at another conference. But basically, um, the smart cube system splits the, the incoming light into its two polarization states using a, a glass prism system to get the S polarization state, which is like, for example, the red light beam path shown, and the P polarization state, which is the blue system. And then there are some LCDs in this system which split the polarizations between the S and the P for the left and right eyes. Um, okay, so what I'm looking at there is light coming from a projector. I'm assuming that's a projector on the left hand side. Yes, a uh, DMV projector with emitting unpolarized okay. light. So the mirrors are in a given state, and then you're hitting this, uh, the octagonal prism, and then splitting it up into a B and S, Correct. and then it's going out to the screen. But I see no opportunity in that design for the uh, left eye data to differ from the right eye. I'm sorry, you don't have to explain it now if you're not ready to. But, uh, I, I, know, I understand. I understand. No, I understand your, your question and you're correct. It's not, the explanation isn't fully complete yet. Okay. But may, maybe in the, the Infocom next year, I'll okay. be able to go into further details. Okay, sure. I apologize okay. for this. But I also I see, I see the bitters in here, so I'll look into that too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>